how's y'all Wednesday going? This is Wednesday. Uh, I posted. Make sure y'all go check out my previous five videos. Um, roll the fifty-five hundred, man. We're gonna, I'm gonna do a giveaway, man. See what I'm saying? Do a giveaway. You know, I do them here and there. I don't do them often. But let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, chiller scares. Camels and I'm camping in the woods and shit like that. What's <sighs> going on? 2017, a YouTuber named camp. Phil has been it uploading two, videos huh? of his hiking trips to his channel Hike Slam, where he gives his viewers a glimpse yeah, into everything two, he does uh, to prepare sure. for a long hike, uh, camp alone in the middle of the woods, choose the right hiking gear, and pretty much everything related to the outdoors. On the night before Thanksgiving 2021, Phil went on an overnight hike to camp on the Appalachian Trail near his house in Virginia. Right. For the first half hour of his hike, things kicked off pretty people normal. That one. But after a while, he finds some odd-looking trash lying on the side of the trail. Strangely, there appears to be some writing on some of the containers he finds, which appear to be song lyrics. Though, so it's hard to imagine why anyone would go through the trouble of writing out entire songs or poems on a plastic container, only to later throw it on the side of the trail. As he crosses the boundary into the wilderness, things continue to get stranger and stranger, and as he nears the campsite, Phil finds another series of disturbing notes. Oh, hell the weirdness no. continues. I'm trying to fuck about it. <laughs> and there's a dead duck here. A dead duck. <laughs> Some of the notes appear to contain cryptic poems, others seem to talk about pretty in-depth conspiracy theories and undercover federal agents or something, and the rest appear to be biographical, with whoever wrote them telling parts of their story. Mm. It's tough to confirm if the person who wrote the notes was the same person who killed the duck, but honestly, it would be too much of a coincidence for the dead duck to be lying right there next to the series of creepy notes, which yeah. were obviously placed there recently considering they're in good condition and not wet. After taking in the eerie scene, Phil notices a tarp and a fire next to a campsite about 20 yards away from the notes and the dead duck. Staying as far away as possible from the campsite, he continues making his way up to a shelter. Although this next part wasn't caught on camera, Phil then reported that he saw two women coming down the trail with their dog, asking him if he had seen the guy who was leaving the creepy notes and dead animals on the side of the trail. When Phil mentioned he saw a campsite and a fire a few yards away from the notes, the woman got scared and asked him to walk back to their car with them. <coughs> Thinking it was probably a good idea to move as far away as possible from the campsite anyway, Phil went back with them and then started hiking in the other direction to find a safer place to spend the night. Yeah. Fortunately, the rest of his hike to the new shelter was a lot more uneventful for Phil. And once he got there, he was able to set up a camp for the night, light a fire, and enjoy his dinner miles away from the disturbing notes he found. A few minutes later, once it got dark, Phil decided to go into the shelter and check out yeah, the do that one and see some of the notes and stories other hikers had left behind. And that's when things get extremely creepy again. I'm gonna do that one day for y'all. I'm gonna check out the shelter log here. I hang out by the fire. Almost every shelter on the Appalachian Trail has a shelter log where people write in their trail names and what's going on. They can write whatever they want in there. It's kind of cool tradition here. Let's see what this one says. Little engine. Back section. Hiking again, finally. It's nice and little trail magic. Ah, some comics and writing and stuff. All right, let's see what's happened recently. Holy crap. Wait a second. Adjust the camera. This writing looks almost exactly like the writing that was on that garbage a couple of miles from here. Even though the shelter where Phil is currently staying at is more than two miles away and on the other side of the road from the previous one, the handwriting in the camp log is exactly the same as the handwriting that was on the notes and garbage on the other side of the road. This is pretty disturbing in itself, but it gets even more so when Phil starts to actually read some of the content in the logbook. 2018, while I was incarcerated at the Okaloosa County Jail. What the heck? Never heard of that. In solitary confinement, I figured the following out. 
referred to Isaiah 28, 15 through 9. This is the same ramblings from the guy that was on the other side of the river. That's kind of scary. Um, kind of weird. Those those women down there said they were going to call the police on the guy. Wow. Or this is going to weird. Do. Oh. It's just like it goes in one direction then immediately goes hey, in that's scary in a going completely up. different direction. And it's just it's so much of it. Like, like this line up here. Think grave robbery in an attempt to obscure the reality of little Mrs. Wolf. Content. Come up with some more of those wicked schemes, JB and company, so I can show some more of your true character. The fact that there's a convicted felon walking around the woods leaving dark and weird notes all over the place is extremely concerning. And mm. based on the kinds of stuff the guy is writing, he's probably not in You know how many people come in a kind this of way. This could obviously be dangerous for a felon, felon, especially since it's already pretty dark and he doesn't appear to have anything to defend himself with. Dumbass. As he gets ready to go to sleep in his tent, Phil walks back to the shelter once more, where he finds half a Gatorade bottle hanging from a string on the ceiling with a note in the same guy's handwriting that reads, Watch out for Yeet Mouse. The dead do walk Yeet. and talk. Understandably creeped out by yet another disturbing note, Phil tries to fall asleep in his tent, obviously a little on edge from everything that happened that day. The last thing you'd want to happen if you were in Phil's position would probably be to start hearing strange noises near the shelter in the middle of the night. And that's exactly what happened. Hmm? While he was falling asleep, he heard something moving near the shelter. And as he poked his head out of the tent, he saw a single guy with a headlamp walking around the shelter. Oh, hell no. Not wanting to find out if it was the same guy who had been leaving notes, Boy, he finally made his way back to the truck the in the middle of the night, on? checking over his shoulder the entire way to make sure he wasn't being followed. Luckily, he made it back home safely, and as of 2024, he hasn't uploaded another video about the strange notes he found on the Appalachian Trail. It's pretty likely that dozens of other hikers after him came across the disturbing notes and the dead duck. But we'll probably never know who exactly the guy who wrote them was, or what he would have done if he ran into any unsuspecting campers. Um, I think we all know. Because you just stole my heart. Are you homeless? Grizzly Gaz is a camping channel on YouTube consisting of dozens of videos featuring Gaz, the uploader, going on hiking and camping trips in the UK with his French bulldog named Fendi. In a lot of his Tell videos, he goes camping in some pretty extreme conditions. I don't want to have no motherfucking bull dog going out with me. Fuck. And he often shows footage of his unexpected can't. encounters with big animals in the middle of the woods. In April 2023, Gaz uploaded a video of a camping trip he made somewhere in the woods in the UK. The first part of the camping trip goes pretty much according to plan, with the footage showing Gaz setting up his tent and chopping wood to make a fire while his dog Fendi keeps him company as the sun begins to set. I ain't doing shit. This next part wasn't shown in the footage, but as Gaz started to prepare his steak dinner over the fire, a random man in jeans and a coat approached his campsite and asked him for a beer and some food. What? Uh, we've got steaks on go now. Bit of ribeye. Pot boiling for some mash. Steak, bitch, we're great. We're great. We're and... I've got a visitor. <laughs> Creeped up behind me asking me if I had a light. He pants. <laughs> this is Martin anyway. I don't know him, but he's stopping for a steak, so. Just some random creep. <laughs> we went round here in a poncho a couple of months ago. We had a few trouble. Although the encounter with the man itself was pretty tame, it's still pretty creepy to be camping in the woods in the middle of nowhere and suddenly be approached by a random guy asking for things. No cap. If you listen closely to what he's saying, some of the guy's sentences are a little incoherent and he appears to ramble a bit when he talks, almost like he's kind of out of it. Later in the footage, Gaz reveals that Martin was homeless and that as they shared their dinner, he told Gaz his story about how he had ruined his life with the drugs and how he had ended up walking alone in the woods that day. Disturbingly, Gaz also mentioned that while they were having dinner, he turned around for a few seconds to chop some more wood to keep the fire going, and when he turned back around, Martin had left the campsite unannounced without even thanking Gaz for the food. Just like, After the strange encounter, that won't help, decided to leave the campsite and head home on a fear that the man would possibly not. tell his friends about meeting some guy camping out in the middle of the woods with expensive filming equipment lying around and suggest robbing him or possibly worse. 
To see if Martin would come back in the middle of the night with possibly ill intentions, Gaz actually left a trail camera on the tree at the campsite to capture everything that happened that night. Smart man. Based on his behavior, it's pretty hard to gauge Martin's intentions and know whether he was just confused and possibly under the influence, or if he had something more sinister planned that evening. Either way, it's probably a good thing that Gaz left and the I campsite say, and didn't great. go back until the next morning. Especially since, when he did go back, his trail camera that he had left was completely gone. Creepy Outdoors is a channel where the uploader frequently shows footage of his nighttime visits to sketchy outdoor locations during all four seasons. Bro, it's no one you In October 2022, Creepy Outdoors uploaded a video of a okay. camping trip he took to an unnamed forest in the middle of nowhere, recording everything he saw as he explored some of the surrounding woods in the darkness. For the first few minutes, all you can hear is the guy's breathing, and you can't help but be kind of amazed at how brave it is to visit a dark forest in the middle of nowhere all alone, not knowing if you're going to run into potentially hostile animals or something else. As the video progresses, the uploader makes a few comments and observations on his surroundings, and throughout the footage, there doesn't appear to be anyone else in the forest with him. Around 13 minutes in, though, an extremely disturbing sound takes the footage in a pretty dark direction. I wouldn't be out there. Bruh, come on, car. Bitch, excuse me? What? All alone, and not knowing if you're going to run into potentially hostile animals. Am I here right, nigga? As the video progresses, the uploader makes a few comments and observations on his surroundings. And throughout the footage, there doesn't appear to be anyone else in the forest with him. Around 13 minutes in, though, an extremely disturbing sound takes the footage in a pretty dark direction. Oh. Did that motherfucker just say, I see you, bitch? Oh. Oh, hi. Yeah, somebody help me. Please, somebody help me. Please. Oh, my God. This motherfucker said, I see you. This motherfucker said, uh, hi. In the middle of no motherfucking where you say, uh, hi. <laughs> Whatever happened to him need to happen. I'm, 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 I'm tired of feeling sorry for these motherfuckers in these stories. MJ be doing dumb shit. I need to get out of here. Oh boy. Oh. Okay. That was creepy. Are you by I yourself? I In see you! Case, probably a couple of hundred feet away from the uploader, a voice yells, I see you. It's possible that the disturbing sound was made by a coyote or a fox, but because it sounded so much like I see you, it could have also been another camper trying to mess with the uploader and scare him. Because the YouTuber had been talking and making noise almost the whole time, he might have inadvertently alerted someone else who may have wanted to play a prank on him just for the fun of it. Still, it's hard to imagine why anyone else would be wandering in the same secluded part of the woods as the uploader. What's most disturbing is that the person, or animal, or whatever it was that made the noise appeared to yell out right after the guy turned off his lamp, almost as if they were waiting for that to happen to yell out something disturbing. Chilly, chilly scares. You said if it, it's, it's an animal one more motherfucking time. For real now. The uploader was able to make it back to his campsite safely, and has continued uploading outdoor footage to this day. I would have never man. Get paid up to two days. They be asking for this shit. Install the chime app. Would y'all go out there by y'all self? Would y'all would have stayed? Man, look, bro, I'm talking. Y'all would have stayed if, if someone would have said, I see you. <laughs> oh, we got the fuck out. Sam is a YouTuber from Cleveland, Ohio, who's been uploading videos of his stealth camping trips to his channel, The Northwest. Yeah, I see him on his videos. 
I'll send you a Facebook. For those of you who don't know, stealth camping just means parking your camper van pretty much anywhere without oh, yeah, paying I've seen for parking. Him I've seen him and people do it anywhere from sure. residential neighborhoods to the middle of nowhere. I've definitely seen him in January 2024, Sam uploaded footage of his stealth camping trip to the woods in Cleveland, leaving his camper van at a local dog park a few hundred yards away. On his way into the woods, he finds a camping tent that's been shredded to pieces, which is honestly a little creepy, but he keeps going anyway. After setting up his tent in the woods, he starts cooking dinner on a camping stove. As the sun starts to set, he sees a couple of people walking by the campsite, and this is when he mentions that he's getting a bad vibe, and feels like he's possibly in danger from them. You guys Most experienced campers would probably tell you that if your gun is telling you something's wrong, you should probably call it a day and leave. But Sam decided to stick it out for the night and kept on recording. As soon as he settles down in his tent to get some sleep, things start to get very creepy. There's somebody in the gun. I don't know if they can see it or not through the tent. I don't think so. I'm leaning right up against the light, but somebody's walking around out there very close to the tent. What you gonna do? As the seconds pass by, the footsteps outside seem to get louder and louder. At one point, Sam calls out to whoever's out there, but at first he doesn't get a response. It's only after he calls out for about the fifth time that every camper's worst nightmare starts to become a reality for Sam. They're walking around outside in circles. What the fuck? Big ass footsteps. Hello? Hello? Alright, I don't like this. Hello? Hello? Oh, man. They're touching my tent. Stop. Stop? Hello? Hello? Stop? Hello? Bro, what you doing? Bro. I'm getting out of here. Hello? You ain't got no weapon? Hello? You ain't got no weapon? I don't know if this is what we're getting out of here. Hang on. Hello? We yeah, walking away now. You got what do you want? What do you want? I have a knife. Where's my knife? Where's me? Where's me? I have a knife. Where's my knife? Oh my god, bro. These people in this story is fucking crazy. Oh my god, I have a knife. Where is my knife? And you're gonna let him know you don't know where your knife is. It's fucking crazy. You should have had your knife soon. You this is the thing about me. Why would you sit up here and record? You can record, but you can't find your knife, my guy. Come on, man. Look. Holy crap. Get away. What do you want? Stop pissing me off. Hello, I can't see you. This whole story Hello? pissing me off. Alright, I'm getting out of here. We're getting out of here. One thing that a lot of people in the comments of Sam's video have pointed out is that if you're being stalked or attacked by a stranger in the middle of the woods, it's probably not a good idea to show weakness by saying things like, I can't see you, I'm spooked, and I don't like this. After this, the oh, you do that in leave life. the campsite, but as soon as he steps out of the tent, Sam sees them standing eerily in the woods just a few feet away from him. Collapsed the tent on me. I don't know which way they went. I think they went this way. I see you. Get away. Start shooting. <laughs> hey, they would have seen something with a dragon block on that. They would have got on. I'll start shooting their way. Y'all better get the fuck out my way. You're just standing there. You're just standing there. What do you want? Shit, I got Leave you. Me alone. Shit, I got gonna make you shit on yourself. Completely freaking out after the disturbing encounter, he obviously decides to call it a night and head back to his van in the park. But things only continue to get worse for Sam. Alright, they're moving again. I don't know, I'm getting out of here. We're going. I'll come back for this some other time. Some other time. I'm here. Shit. I'm leaving. Don't follow me. I don't know where to go. I don't know which way to get out of here. I smell your cigarette. I can hear you. Bro. I hear you. Just give up, buddy. As he's making his way back to the park, he looks back at the campsite and sees the attackers stealing his things. But he decides to leave his stuff behind, terrified for his life. As he's running through the woods now, he turns back and sees his attackers chasing him. You gotta lead back to the main trail. I don't know where they are. I think I... Bro, y'all, bro. It's all foggy up here. 
I got water in my headlamp. I need to. I don't know where to go. I don't see or hear anybody. You ain't got no flashlight. You just got a camera. Just <laughs> anymore. Like it would, it would be killing me, bro. I hear them coming. They be doing all this shit. Shut up. Here's a Okay. Get me. There. I'm recording all of this. I'm calling the police. What you gonna tell them? Something following you? Something? You don't know what it is? Now, chill story. This is what you need to say something because it could be an animal. Well, he said it was a person, so never mind. Run it back on the bed. Back on the bed. Okay. Okay. Get away from me! You ain't got nothing to fear yourself with a fucking life. Man safely, he drove home and gave his viewers a recap of everything that happened. As you can imagine, a lot of people in the comments accused the uploader of staging the video, mentioning that nobody in their right mind would continue to record as they sprint through the woods in the dark. But his reaction seems pretty genuine to me. Different people act different ways in nah, believe that stress. As for who the two guys who stalked and attacked him were and what they wanted, that's really anyone's guess. If what they did to Sam was some kind of joke, that's a pretty messed up joke to play on someone. Hang on, Cap. Because the uploader confirmed that they didn't have come over here with that. when he went back the following I go morning, camp. it's also clear that moving the campsite wasn't really going to see focus. some shit live ass. We can't really and know what they would have done to him if he hadn't run from the campsite. Yeah. But at any rate, like it's probably a good thing he did. Yeah, that was kind of creepy. I ain't gonna lie to you. That was kind of creepy. I ain't gonna lie. Love Sundays is a camping channel on YouTube run by a guy named Sean who uploads some pretty cool footage of his solo camping trips everywhere in the UK. In February 2024, he uploaded a video where he left his van on the side of the road next to the woods and then went to do some exploring, jumping over a fence to walk through the woods. After that, Sean makes his way back to his van to make dinner, where he then heads out once again for an evening stroll through the woods. Upon his return to the van, he goes to bed at about 9 p.m., but at 3 in the morning, things start to get a little disturbing. All being well, I'll see you in the morning. Good night. A car's just pulled up, and it sounds like they're walking around the van. You ain't, you hear a car? You ain't going Get in your, well, you already in your van, bro. All you just got to do is just get in the driver's seat and just go. As soon as Sean pulls back the curtains, the people who were walking around the van get back in their car. When he put his head out the window to see what was going on, the car drove away, leaving him alone for the rest of the night. It wasn't until the next morning that Sean realized what the visitors had done to his van. Right, well, I think we should at least go outside and see how miserable the weather is. They got all this shit. They so y'all just recording just to fucking record, man. Y'all ain't got nothing to defend yourself. Hold on. Oh, your door stuck. What are we doing? The actual. See that? Huh? What they were trying to do? So it is. It's obviously just people want to come out and just be funny, I guess. But how dangerous is that? Locking someone in their van? Okay. Let me check the back door. Well, there's nothing on this one because uh, they want to be able to type anything with them. There's no way they could have done that door anyway. That is why someone would want to lock a stranger in their van. Yeah, no problem, the kids. Yes. No problem, kids. The only yeah, reasonable okay. explanation I can think of is that maybe they were trying to steal the diesel from the van and put the zip ties on the door in case Sean realized what was happening and attempted to get out to stop them. It could have also been a local who didn't want anyone parking their camping van in that area, but we'll likely never know. Luckily, after he cut the zip ties off, he made it back home unharmed and has continued uploading videos of his camping adventures in the UK. Thanks. The Facts by HowToHunt.com is a channel dedicated to sharing knowledge about the outdoors and encouraging people to explore the wilderness. In January 2022, a pretty terrifying video was uploaded to the channel in which a group of teenagers can be seen reacting to some strange sounds coming from somewhere in the woods. Hmm? 
Get Trevor. Austin, get over. What the fuck is that? What the fuck, bro? Hey! That was not an elk. Oh, I don't know what that is, buddy. But you might, y'all might want to get the fuck up out of there. Everybody, get in my truck. Yeah, get in my truck. Beyond the woods in the middle of the night, it can be easy to mistake certain animal noises with human screams. Foxes, coyotes, and bobcats are all known to make sounds that can sometimes be hard to tell apart from human yelling. But in this case, I don't know of any animal that can make that kind of noise, especially yeah, no. when you consider how loud the banging on the trees was. Yeah, no. Elk are known to rub their antlers against trees, but it obviously doesn't sound that loud or menacing. A lot of people in the comments of the video have mentioned that the sounds aren't too different from human screams, and it could have just been a man screaming in the woods in the middle of the night, although that's also pretty messed up in itself. Even though some viewers have claimed the video is staged, the uploader's reactions seem pretty genuine in this case, and the only thing we can say for sure is that it's probably a good thing that the guys didn't run into whoever or whatever was making those noises. No cap. My rat Oh. Shit, this video is crazy. I ain't gonna cap. I, I see you shit. I would have scrapped the fuck on. And the dude, other dude that's talking about some where's my knife type shit. Oh, man. When y'all go camping, make sure y'all have something to protect y'all self. And make sure y'all have something that y'all can call or, you know what I'm saying, y'all that y'all can know, notify the police anything. Anything to notify the police that y'all there or, or y'all go missing or something or somebody you feel me? So anything going on. I watch a lot of scary movies. So I know I know the shit that's going on. You feel me? That being said, give me your thumbs up, like and subscribe, chill and scares you did this again through this part two. Really you should I I think you forgot to put part two too. I'm I'm put it on my own. <laughs> that being said, see you when I see y'all. Let's ride.